and uh, I've had a thought in my mind for several weeks now. This was before Brother Danny even approached me about speaking this evening. And so I just, some, if I get down in there, I got it all up here. Y'all just don't have something on right. It's y'all's fault. <laughs> don't look at me like I did it. <laughs> got it? Everything good? All right. But sometimes I, if I'm not careful, I'll take a thought, get a thought, work up the thought, and preach the thought to death before I get here. And uh, that happens a lot of times. Uh, I know Doris accused me of talking to myself. I do. And uh, I'll talk to the television. And all them crazy people on there too. <laughs> but I have to be careful about how that I prepare these things and... So I let it just kind of sit there for a while and uh, just didn't really get involved into it until later this week. And I was studying a little bit last night, and as I did, I ran across another scripture. And, uh, you know, that happens a little t every now and then. And I said, you know, that scripture will go right along with that, won't it? So the Lord works in mysterious ways. But what I want to speak on tonight is our relationship with Jesus Christ through hope. Now, I know that we talk about as Tommy was mentioning tonight, Hebrews 1, 11 and 1, where it says that faith is the substance of hope, the evidence of things not seen. And that is the truth. There we go. I'm here now. Thank the Lord I finally got here. I couldn't even hear myself. But I heard me then. Somebody kicked the drop cord. Got it going. But we want to talk about hope. And I want to talk about hope. I, 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 you know, that's something we don't address a lot of times. Uh, but if we look at hope, everything that we have, as I just read, faith is the substance of hope. We have to have hope. Friend, there, there's, you can have all the faith in the world. But if you don't have hope in something, there's nothing going to happen. you got to have some hope. And when I was looking, the other night I turned and I found Naomi in the book of Ruth, in the first chapter. And Naomi was talking to her daughter-in-laws. Her husband was dead. Her sons were all dead. All she was left with was herself and three foreign daughter-in-laws. Now, I have to look at this for just a moment to try to understand Naomi's thinking. Naomi is a Jew of the first order. Moabites are not. So here was Naomi, and her husband had died. Everything was gone. She was going to have to go back to her people. Now, if you look at this, in the 10th verse, the Bible said, And the girls, there the ladies, said unto her, Surely we will return with thee unto thy people. Well, that wasn't going to fly over good in Israel. For her to come dragging back three Moabites, that wasn't going to work. 
Now, we're not going to get into all of that connotations of all of that tonight, but we can see a problem already arising, and Naomi is trying to figure a way out of this. And Naomi said, Turn again, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Are there yet any more sons in my womb that they may be your husbands? Why do you want to go with me? See, there's an answer in God's Word for everything. It's called a kinsman redeemer that Naomi was not looking at. Her kinsmen back home would remember the Word of God. Her daughters-in-law that were recently widowed would be subject for a kinsman redeemer to take them as, her, as their wife. But she wasn't looking for those things. Turn again, my daughters. Go your way. For I am too old to have a husband. How many times, and Brother Danny so eloquently brought that out this morning. That was a fantastic word of God that we heard today. But in the world, we see through things through the world's eyes. We don't see things through what God sees a, a lot of times because we don't want to. We're trying to get out of something. We're trying to see things as we wish them to be instead of the way God is leading and directing us to do. Turn again, my daughters. Go your way, for I am too old to have a husband. If I should say, I have hope. There's the word. But I don't have hope. But if I should say I have hope, if I should, if I should have a an husband also tonight and should bear sons, would you tarry for them till they are grown? Would you stay for them, stay for them for having them as husbands? Nay, my daughters, and it grieveth me for your sakes that the hand of the Lord is gone against me. There's where the problem is. The problem is I have no hope. I'm not looking to God for my, who is my deliverer. I am not looking to Him to bring about an answer to my dilemma that I am in. But I have no hope. What if I said I had hope? And I had a husband tonight, and I had children. Would you wait on them? I say not. How do you know what they would do or what they would not do? What were you doing in Moab to begin with? But God is gone out against me. Now it's God's fault. And if you hear them all the time on TV, I don't have a racist bone in my body. That's everything this woman is saying. Y'all go on back to your people. I'm going to go to mine. For God has gone out from me. And he's against me. But I have no hope. You know, we accept the reality of things so quickly. This is a reality. All of a sudden, it becomes a rule. It becomes a law. It becomes the reasoning. It becomes the right thing. But see, when I'm standing back and I'm listening to the things of God, and I'm reading the Word of God, when those things don't line up with the Word of God, they're not the right thing. I don't care how many times the world says so. Everybody, the overwhelming, it's grown from 60 to 70, now to 
upwards of 90% of the American people approve of the murder of an unborn child. Who come up with these figures? What lying tongue come up with that? I'll assure you if an honest poll of the American people were taken, do you approve of the brutal murder of an unborn child and the safety of this womb of his mother, would you agree to that? Because let me tell you why. I ask that question. Because when you agree with something, you become complicit in the murder. Back up. And chew on that one for a while. Well, I think a woman ought to have the right. No, a woman doesn't have the right. Nobody has the right to murder a child. For any reason. There is no right. But we accept the reality. The poles say. The polls said Hillary Clinton was going to win by 15 points. I believe it came out as one of the worst defeats in American electoral voting. You want to listen to a poll? We've already had them. Now, you wouldn't think these people would lie to you now, would you? But when we accept as a reality that the majority of American people, as Brother Danny was bringing out this morning, don't want prayer in the schools. Where are they getting this from? Do you know there are places in this country I'm talking about the 50 United States. I'm talking about the 48, if you want to just draw it down to this continent. 48 states. Do you know there are places in this country where that flag cannot be flown? You know why? Because it might offend somebody. We're moving into a sorry state, a sorry state of affairs, when we can't even be proud to be an American. We are the most giving, the most loving people on earth. But they always told me, no good deed goes unpunished. Well, that cynical and I'm just not going to buy it. I'm going to do that which is good. And that which is right in the sight of the Lord. In spite of everybody else. But here's Naomi was saying. Really I have no hope because Christ or God has turned against me. And you say well now that's just one of instance. No. When the angel of God came down. Tapped 90 some odd year old Sarah on the shoulder and said, You're going to have a son? What did she say to the messenger of God? Now, when you're talking about the messenger of God, you're speaking, he's speaking God's word, not his word, God's word. What did Sarah do? She laughed. Are you crazy? Is God crazy? I'm 95 years old. How am I going to have any children? We limit ourselves to what God can do. We narrow it down and say, God, this is all that you can do about this. There's not going to be anything else going to be accomplished because first thing off the bat, I'm just not going to do it. That's all that it boils down to. Now, faith is that substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. We can have all the faith in the world. But what do you have faith in? A batter walks up to the box 
and he has faith, if that man flungs that ball down through here, I'm going to hit it over that there fence. You know, he has faith that he can do that. If he didn't have faith he could do that, he wouldn't be in the box. And then when it's all over and he gets that base hit, what does he do? Runs over there and blesses himself and thanks God. Faith is that substance of hope. Faith puts hope in action. Act, the, the whole action of what we have is something that we are hoping for. We have to hope. I don't care what it is. I have to hope for something. I have to hope that something's going to happen. We had prayer up here tonight. We're hoping. Praise God. We're hoping. Why? Because we want to see people healed. We want to see the wonderful workings of God inside of the household of faith. We want to see a blessing from the Lord. So we're hoping that that's going to happen. And our faith is the substance of that hope and it's going to drive that hope to come to pass. Praise God. It's not seen. We don't know how it's going to happen. But all we do is we have faith to believe that our hope is going to come to pass because God said so. Amen. Don't let anyone take away your hope. They can stand back and say, it's not right. It's foolish. It's dumb. Your hope doesn't matter. They'll take it. And they'll talk to you about how that it can't happen. It can't come to pass. Well, see, Jesus had a different way about it. He just had a, Christ had a way of being emphatic. He had a way of just getting things across very simplistic and very sure. Let me tell you how this works, he said. You have not because you ask not. Now, you stand around, I'm a child of faith. We can come in this house. We can hear Brother Danny, who is one of the best preachers I've heard. We can sit out here on these pews and we can just wallow out our lives and die. And all the time, Christ knows that we have a need in our life. We need to see something happening down inside of our life. We need to see the dynamo of God, His Holy Spirit, boiling up within us and we stand back and say, well, one day, one day, you have not because you ask not. And then he came back and he said, ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it'll be opened unto you. All God is wanting you to do is come to him, believing him with a hope. It doesn't matter. You can come before the throne of God. But if you don't have something in your life that you're looking for, it doesn't amount to anything. You can just stand there, dumbfounded. Well, I would say something, but everybody would laugh at me. Hey, I'm up here working up a sweat. And y'all can just laugh at me if you want to. But I believe what I'm saying. Amen. Praise God. I've asked God about this. I want to see something happen. I want to see the church turn around and say, Lord, wait a minute. We need something inside of the household of God. We've just made appointments here tonight of people that are going to pick out the leadership of this church. You have something you need to be praying about? You need to really be praying about that. There are some important things coming up in the next few years for this church. You need to be a part of it. And the way that you're a part of it is you bring that hope that you have before the throne of grace through faith and watch God swing open the doors and pour you out that blessing inside of the household of God that we have never seen before. But we'll see a shaking and a moving among the people of God. 
That's what we need today. Amen. Asking you shall receive. Seeking you shall find. Knock. And it shall be opened unto you. Greatest example that I know of this is the woman with the issue. Now, if we look at that woman with the issue, what was the first thing we saw about her? We don't know anything about her. We don't know nothing. We don't even know where she lived. She had a house. I don't know anything else about it. I don't know anything about her Sunday school attendance. I don't know anything about how often she went to synagogue. I don't know anything about her except that she heard Jesus was coming by. She had an issue of blood that had been going on for 12 years. No hope in sight. I'll assure you, she had talked to every doctor. She had talked to every healer. She had talked to every herbalist. She had heard all of her neighbors giving all their good advice. Oh yeah. Everybody. Oh, I had that one time. For 12 years. But see, she was there in her house. Now back, if you look over in the ninth chapter, I think it's Luke, you'll find the story there. But if you go back to the sixth chapter, you find where the people were coming to Jesus, trying to touch him. This was beforehand because virtue was leaving his body. They were being healed. Perhaps she had heard about that. But the Bible said that she got over and she said, hope. This is hope. She said, if I can just get to him and I can just touch his clothes, then I'll be made whole. That's faith, children. That's having a hope and putting faith to it. And the Bible said that Jesus was coming along and the throng of people that were around him. Now, Israel is a desert place. It gets a little over 65 degrees there. Plus 40 or so. And here's this poor woman. Didn't have a quart and a half blood left in her. And she hits the street. Well, the Bible said there was a throng of people around Jesus. Why? Because they were trying to touch him. The disciples were there trying to fend them off. They were fighting with them. You know, I can see them. And uh, they were trying to get him along. And everybody's around him and they're pushing and pulling and carrying on. And the disciple, they had to pick John up twice probably. But uh, just had to keep it going, keep it going. And all of a sudden, Jesus said, who touched me? Amen. Good Lord, have mercy. Who touched you? Finally, one of the disciples turned to him and said, Lord, there's a multitude out here. There's a throng of people out here. And everybody's trying to touch you. Everybody's pushing and pulling and fighting and fussing and carrying on. And you ask, who touched you? I felt the virtue when it left my body. The Bible said that woman was healed that moment. Why? Because of hope. 
she had. She put faith to it and said, I can make it. I can press against that throne. I won't stop until I receive from God what I need. You know what she did? I believe with an assurance, she left that house, probably looked back on it one more time and said, I'll either be back whole or I won't be back. It takes that kind of faith, saints, to reach out and say, I'm going to make it. I'm going to take this hope that I have had placed in my heart. If I can just touch him, praise God, I can be made whole. Lord, let me just reach out and touch the hem of his garment. And the Bible said she realized without a shadow of a doubt she couldn't hide it. And she confessed. The great answer. The psalmist in 33 and 22 said, Let thy mercy, O Lord, be upon us as we hope in you. Lord, let, our mer let your mercy be upon us as we hope in you. In 38 and 15 he said, For in thee, O Lord, I have hope. Thou wilt hear, O Lord, my God. I have hope, for it's in thee, O Lord, do I hope. The Bible said that he is our hope. He is eternal in the heavens. He sits at the right hand of the throne of God and makes intercession for you and I every moment. There's not a time that he's not speaking on your behalf. And all he's wanting you to do is ask, seek, and knock. Have hope. And don't let the hope be taken from you by the things of the world. We can lose hope. We can throw our hands up. I've heard people, I, I just give up. I'm through. I'm done. I'm out. I'm not. I still serve a risen Savior. Amen. Praise God. He came up out of that tomb as a risen Savior. Praise God. He was dead and now he lives and he lives forevermore. And he said, if I'll just have faith in him and I'll hope, the hope of the resurrection. Praise God. The hope one day that he's coming back. I have never seen him. I've never seen this eastern sky split. I've never seen any of these things. I've never, Brother Sweat, I've never walked the street of gold. But praise God, he's placed within me a heart that I believe God and I hope beyond all hope because my hope is in him who is eternal in the heavens. I'm not going to be left out. But one day I shall go to be with him. Let us bow our heads. Our Father God in heaven, I thank you for this night. I thank you, Lord, for the hope that you have placed in our life. I thank you, God, for the goodness that you have given us. I thank you, Lord, that we have peace. We have peace because we understand who's in control. And our hope is in you. Lord, you have never failed us. Lord, you said you would never leave us nor forsake us. You would be with us always, even to the end. God, that's our hope. And Lord, our faith holds to that hope that, Lord, that you shall accomplish that which you have started in us. Father, I ask you right now that you would bless in this house. That, Lord, if there be one here today, that doesn't know you as their Savior. They have lost their hope. They have moved away and moved aside the things of God for other things. Father, I pray that you would touch that heart right now and that, God, that you would speak into them the words of hope 
the words of peace, and the words of salvation. And Father, we'll bless your name, O God. While every head is bowed, every eye closed in this house for just a moment. Is there one here tonight that you have a need in Jesus Christ? Would you lift that hand towards heaven? God bless these all over this house. God bless these all over this house. Church, I want you to stand. I want you to stand. Everybody stand. There are over 10 people raised a hand. I have a need in Jesus Christ tonight. I want us to pray. The Bible says pray one for another. Praise the Lord. If, if you can't pray for me, I need to go out on the street. Those people don't care anything about me. I think some of you love me. Well, at least care about me a little bit. But those beside you and those up and down those aisles, I want you to pray that God would minister to them right now for those needs that they have in their life. Let us pray together. Father God in heaven, I thank you, Master, for these that raised their hand tonight. I thank you, Lord, for that exercise.